Here we have it now. Andrew Heaney uh, signs a two-year contract with Texas. He follows Tyler Anderson out, who went to uh, Anaheim, and he goes to Texas, gets a two-year guaranteed deal. He's got an opt-out, so good for him, the lefty. He can help that Ranger rotation, of course, led by Jacob DeGrom. Andrew says hello on his busy program. Andrew, thank you. Always a pleasure to talk. Appreciate a couple yeah. minutes here. Boy, not many pitchers can say they pitched at Yankee Stadium and Dodger Stadium. How about that for a sec? Let's talk about that. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I've been uh, extremely lucky and fortunate to, to play on on some really great teams, some great players, uh, great organizations. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm extremely uh, lucky to, to have been able to do that. Uh, what's the biggest difference? Before we get to Texas, Andrew, give me a little feel from a media fan standpoint. What did you find the biggest difference between New York and L.A.? Yeah, I mean, I, I really, uh, I liked, uh, I liked being in LA. Um, just a little bit more my vibe, more my speed. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I really enjoyed myself at both places with, uh, especially with the guys I played with in New York. Uh, really great guys, good teammates, uh, good people. So, um, you know, I, I enjoy both. Obviously, I know I was <laughs> a much better pitcher in LA than I was in New York. And, uh, you know, anytime you pitch, uh, pitch good somewhere, it's probably going to, going to make you feel a little better, make the fans feel a little better. 100%, and you went very well for the Dodgers. 14 starts last year, excellent ERA. You turned it around. Same thing with Tyler Anderson. What was the key with Mark Pryor there, Andrew? What can you tell me? Yeah, Mark Pryor, Connor McGinnis, the two pitching guys there were great. Um, coming into spring training, knew I needed to make some changes, uh, both mechanically and uh, a couple couple changes to my, uh, to my slider. And uh, once I kind of got that going, really was just rolling with two pitches pretty much the whole year and um, was, was getting swing and miss and uh, just kind of kept it rolling. Those guys are uh, really great at what they do and obviously very, very thankful for what they did for, for me and my career. And a thankful scenario for you. You did a little bit of everything. I mean, you pitched out of the bullpen. You made 14 starts. You were uh, That's been your career the last couple of years anyway, but very useful when the Dodgers needed you, there you were, and you made the 14 starts. Now you go to Texas, you'll be in that rotation all the time. Thoughts on that for a sec? Let me hear. Yeah, I mean, of course, like, I get to L.A., and I understand the position that I'm in, the, the position the team's in to win, trying to win a World Series. Um, when it got down to the end of the year, I understood that, you know, my value was going to be coming out of the bullpen. So I have no problem with that. Uh, you know, you want to win, and whatever you can do to win, you're happy to do. Obviously, uh, I'm extremely excited to be here in Texas, excited to be a part of this rotation, and, and you know, hope to hope to stick in the rotation and throw throw a whole lot more than seventy you know seventy two innings or whatever I threw last year. So, uh, working hard to do that and just excited to get it going. Uh, good for you, excellent opportunity. Tyler Anderson leaves and you leave, so the Dodgers got to fill those two spots now. With Texas, you got Degrom to anchor that rotation. That had to have uh, some influence on you making a move because they're going to be competitive. Plus, a new pitching coach and both shoes won three championships. How about that for a sec? Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be a part of it. Obviously, we got a lot of a lot of new guys coming into the rotation, you know, between myself, Odorizzi, DeGrom, um, you know, new pitching coach, new manager. So, yeah, I think uh, I think it'll be exciting. I think probably everybody's just ready to kind of get in and, and get going, get, um, you know, get started. Uh, the ballpark and the environment in the American League West. Andrew, what can you tell me about that? Yeah, I mean, I love this ballpark. Pitched here a couple times. Uh, very familiar with the, the AL West. Uh, Pretty much spent most of my career there so you know pretty pretty familiar with all the places around there and so um you know it's it's nothing uh nothing i haven't experienced and of course uh with the angels all those years and joe madden there you have a part of that lead crew with joe making you one of those team leaders uh ex describe the mood dodger locker clubhouse after san diego somehow beat you in four games what was that mood there on that saturday night what can you tell me about that I mean, obviously, uh, there's only one team that's going to win the last game of the year. Um, we really felt like we had that team. We felt like we were uh, in a good position to, to do that. Um, the Padres got hot. Um, we, we weren't necessarily. You know, I, I, think, uh, I think that's the beauty of baseball. Any, any team can win at any time. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, it was a disappointing finish. And, um, you know, it's uh, not the – you know, not the way that everybody on that team envisioned the season ending. 
Hundred percent. All right, you go to Texas now. You look at your scenario a little differently than you did last off season when you, as you said, wanted to refine yourself in LA. Now you know exactly where you stand. So you maybe you approach spring training in the beginning of the year a little differently. I know you're going to want to prove, uh, you know, to your new teammates that uh, this outlay of finances was worth it. Give me your thoughts here on the uh, getting ready for spring and how you approach spring this year compared to spring, say, last year out in Glendale with the Dodgers. Let me hear. Yeah, obviously, uh, you know, I spoke to it earlier. I was, I was terrible, uh, you know, after I finished the season in 2021 with the Yankees and I uh, knew it was kind of uh, a, a bit more of a refining and, you know, reimagining of kind of who I am as a pitcher. And um, I think this year I feel very confident in uh, who I am, what I, what I can do and uh, what I need to keep doing and what I need to improve on. Um, so I, I think there's a little bit less, probably less, uh, Tinkering, maybe you could say, uh, and a little bit more just kind of going out there and getting prepared for a season. Uh, pitch clock for you, Andrew. A lot of people think the hitters will have a harder adjustment than the pitchers. And if anybody has to adjust pitching-wise, it might be the guys out of the bullpen throwing 95 miles an hour who need a little more time uh, to sort of get themselves organized for the next delivery. Shouldn't bother you too much. How about the pitch clock here as far as 2023 is concerned? Not going to bother me at all. Um, I don't know where I rank, but I'd imagine I'm probably one of the quicker, quicker guys out there. Um, you know, I, I don't think I'll have any problem with it. I think you'd be fine with it. And the shift, does it help or hurt? I mean, we know it's going to help the offense. How does it hurt a pitcher now with the shift there? You know, some more ground balls are going to get through the infield. Give me a little rundown on how you feel it might affect the pitchers in, the, in baseball. Yeah, I don't get many ground balls. Uh, <laughs> I get a lot of fly balls, yeah. a lot of strikes. <laughs> So, so I think for me, uh, I actually think it's might actually be, sort of be a net positive for me um, as far as just kind of how it maybe negatively affects other pitchers uh, more than it does me. So um, yeah, I'd love to get some soft contact ground balls, and I hope they don't find the hole. But, uh, you know, I, I know who I am. I know I'm a, I'm a fly ball and strikeout guy, so um, I don't think it'll affect me that much. And nice to get this done by Christmas, right? I mean, you, nobody wants to sit around there on the holidays wondering where you're going to pitch in 2023, even if you knew you are going to find a team eventually. Nice to get this done. You get yourself organized for the holidays. That's a break, correct? No, it's great. I mean, it's great for, it's great for the fans, too. I mean, I think everybody gets excited. They want to see, uh, you know, exciting winter meetings and see a lot of moves go down. It's good for, good for the sport. Uh, good for me personally. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm down here in Dallas to get to work out and, um, you know, be, be in the clubhouse and, and then, you know, go home and kind of, you know, get through the holidays and then really get going again and uh, get down here some more. So, I mean, I'm, I'm excited and I think it's, uh, like I said, it's a net positive for everybody. And congratulations to you. That's a great job. We're enjoying I love Bochi and Maddox. You're in good shape. Thanks very much for a few minutes. Good luck to you. Appreciate you coming on. Thanks for having me.